big numbers in small spaces, simulating atoms, molecules, and Brownian motion. How many molecules are in a single drop of water? Or a single cell? Let's fly in and find out. This may look realistic, but it isn't. You're only seeing about one out of every thousand water molecules. Here's how they look at full density. This cube is only three nanometers, or three billionths of a meter on each side. Its volume was only 27 billionths of a billionth of a billionth of a cubic meter. But the water molecules are so small and packed together so tightly that there are about 900 in this tiny space. To put this into perspective, think of a red blood cell, which is about 7 microns or 7 millionths of a meter in diameter. More than 140 red blood cells laid side by side could fit into a single millimeter, and yet the volume of each cell could hold about 3 trillion water molecules. In each water molecule, Two hydrogen atoms are bonded to a single oxygen atom. Each atom is shown as a sphere, even though it actually consists of protons and neutrons in the nucleus, and electrons that travel around the nucleus at speeds that may approach the speed of light. The size of each sphere is determined by the atom's van der Waals radius, named after Johannes Diederik van der Waals, winner of the 1910 Nobel Prize in Physics. Two atoms joined by a covalent bond share electrons and have overlapping van der Waals radii. The bonds themselves are not rigid. Instead, you can think of them as springs that stretch and flex at very high speed. To simulate their motions, we have to take tiny steps through time using Newton's equations of motion, a method called molecular dynamics. Because of the tiny time step, molecular dynamics simulations are very time-consuming, even on supercomputers. As shown here, the time step is usually about one femtosecond, or one millionth of one billionth of a second. The bonds between the atoms are only about one angstrom long, or one tenth of a billionth of a meter, and with very short time steps you can see the atoms moving as if in slow motion. On the other hand, the entire water molecule seems to be hanging in space, since its overall motion is much slower than the motions of the individual atoms. When we show the surrounding water molecules again, you can see that the atoms of different molecules overlap very little because they are not covalently bonded to each other. You can also see molecules disappearing and reappearing at the edges of the box. This is a technique called periodic boundary conditions, where molecules can jump to opposing sides. By wrapping interactions around the box, the simulation mimics an infinite volume without adding more water molecules. It also means nothing is needed to hold the water, like the glass walls of a beaker. This simplifies the calculations and reduces the computation time. As you watch the molecules move, you can see another kind of force at work between neighbors. Although it is much weaker than a covalent bond, notice how it keeps adjacent hydrogen and oxygen atoms facing each other while they vibrate. This helps the molecules pack together tightly and restrains their motion for short periods of time. These special interactions occur with hydrogen atoms and are called hydrogen bonds. When other molecules are dissolved, they also interact with the surrounding water. Here you can see a single molecule of dissolved glucose, a simple sugar composed of carbon, hydrogen, and oxygen atoms. At very short times, you can see the vibrations of the atoms as they interact with the invisible layer of surrounding water. Over longer times, the surrounding layer changes as hydrogen bonds are broken and reform between different atoms. As this occurs, the glucose molecule will change position and will appear to make stepwise movements of different lengths in random directions. You can see this effect as the movie speeds up and the simulation appears to be taking longer time steps. 
From these periodic snapshots, you can see the net displacement of the glucose molecule as well as faster atomic vibrations. Over longer times than several hundred femtoseconds, the range of steps can be calculated without all the underlying atomic interactions. This is done using a diffusion coefficient originally defined by Albert Einstein and other scientists. It depends on Boltzmann's constant, temperature, the viscosity of the solution, and the size of the molecule. With the diffusion coefficient, we can simulate diffusion, or Brownian motion, just by moving the molecule in a random direction to a net distance chosen from a range of values pre-computed for the chosen time step. This approach is called Brownian dynamics and requires far fewer calculations than molecular dynamics. To illustrate, in the movie we now replace the molecular dynamics snapshots with a Brownian dynamics simulation. As shown by the growing path, we calculate only a new position for the entire molecule after each time step of 300 femtoseconds. In other words, we no longer have to calculate atomic interactions with the surrounding water in steps of a single femtosecond. The end result is stepwise movements that match snapshots from molecular dynamics. With Brownian dynamics, the time step can be increased and the molecule's steps will lengthen to keep pace. In this example, we increase the time step to a value over 3 million times longer, from 300 femtoseconds to 1 microsecond or 1 millionth of a second. As a result, the steps increase in length to an average value over a thousand times longer, or about the level that might be used to simulate diffusion in a cell. In this way, we illustrate another important principle of diffusion. The average displacement changes as the square root of a change in time. In other words, if the time step is doubled, the average step length will increase only by the square root of 2, and so on. In our movie, the time step increases by more than 1 million, but the average step length increases by a bit more than 1,000. 1,000 is the square root of 1 million, and so in the movie you can actually see this important relationship as we revisit the beginning and end of the path traveled by the glucose molecule. As we return to our lab bench, we see that Brownian dynamic simulations can be carried all the way up to human scales of space and time. For example, millions of glucose molecules can diffuse in a lab beaker from minutes to hours. As molecules encounter surfaces like the beaker, they simply appear to bounce off using a technique called specular reflection, just as light reflects from a mirror. To summarize, molecular dynamics can be used to study molecular structure and function over time and space scales at which interatomic forces are critical. For example, in drug design and protein structure prediction. Current supercomputing research is pursuing new ways to simulate more atoms and larger molecules over longer periods of time. On the other hand, Brownian dynamics can be used to simulate diffusion at even longer times relevant to cell biology. Coupling Brownian dynamics to chemical reactions is another area of active research, and these methods can be used to simulate realistic models of cells and tissues.